I wonder if the FX30 has as good stabilization as the Panasonic S5. <clears throat> I wonder if the S5's autofocus can hang with the Sony FX30. I mean, the S5 is full frame. It's better in low light. But the FX30, it's got everything that FX3 has. I wonder if the FX30, all the lenses are as good as the lenses that I could use with the Panasonic S5. I, I wonder if I can adapt the vintage lenses I have to the Panasonic. I know I can adapt them to the Sony. I wonder if the Sony's dual native ISO is as good as the Panasonic S5. I mean, I, I've seen some videos where the dual ISO is not happening in the Sony. I don't know if that's true. I know that the dual ISO in the Panasonic is dope. I wonder if I'm making the right decision. Maybe I should wait and save money and get this A7S III. Maybe I should get that Canon R5C, but that's that's way too much money when I have to get all new lenses. Maybe I should get the FX3. Although I want the viewfinder, you know? But I mean, do I really need a viewfinder? But I use the viewfinder when I'm outside and it's really bright, but then I should get an external monitor. But I don't want to use an external monitor because I don't feel like carrying it around. But I should use it because if I get an external monitor, I could shoot in RAW in the FX30 and the S5. FX30 lets me shoot higher frame rates without a crop. Well, with a crop, because it's everything is cropped in FX30. Panasonic lets me go up to 60, though. Hmm. I don't know. The colors in the Panasonic are much better. Well, I don't know about much better. I mean, I'm... I've gotten to the point where I've tweaked the picture profiles in the A6400. I'm sure I could do the same thing in the FX30. That James Matthews Cine 4 thing, man, that, those, that footage looks so good. Now I have to like relearn the whole color science in a new camera. Hmm. The price is like exactly the same. I mean, I can get the S5, with these lenses, I could even get an S5 with a lens and the Atomos Ninja 5 for the same price that I can get the FX30. And I have all the FX30 lenses. They both work on my gimbal. They're both about the same size, weight, really not a big difference, but that viewfinder. I like that viewfinder. But I could get one of those viewfinders for the FX30. Then I could still be in the Sony system, I know the menu system, even though I heard the FX30 menu system is even better. But what, what does better mean? Like, I'm used to the A6400, you know, like better might be totally new to me and confuse me. And Panasonic's menu system is supposed to be easy. I could shoot anamorphic in the camera in the Panasonic. Sony, I can't do that. I'm interested in anamorphic. But those lenses are mad expensive. And you know, in the Sony, I could, I could emulate pan, uh, anamorphic. I don't know. I can't really use some of the accessories that I have. Well, I could use pretty much all my accessories. I mean, I can't use the cage. But I could use my microphone with both. I could use my gimbal with both, my Weeble S. It's a tough call. It's like, basically, I guess it gets down to between full frame and APS-C. Color science, stabilization, like that. Stabilization was a big deal for me. You know, I'm shooting a film by myself, 95% of it. I need better stabilization. I don't want to have to carry my gimbal around me all the time for everything. I don't even like the way shots look with a gimbal most of the time. Stabilization is a big deal, and I, 
I know that the stabilization is going to be better in the Panasonic, although I, you know, I don't know what the stabilization is like in the, in the Sony FX30. It's not going to be as good, but it's not going to be bad. Maybe it'll suck, I don't know. So stabilization, the autofocus really doesn't make that much of a difference to me, although it's a big advantage in the Sony, but the S5, that autofocus is good enough, I'm sure, for the reasons that I would use it personally. I ain't worried about it. I think if I spend the time and tweak it and really get to learn the camera and you know let it become a part of my body, that Sony is like, just put it somewhere and it's just gonna work. But again, I shot a whole film with my phone. I use manual focus almost the whole time. It's a tough decision, yo. And Sony, you know, like I've been a part of this Sony. Every YouTuber I watch is a Sony fanboy, a Sony ambassador. Like when I started to research the Panasonic, all of a sudden, all these YouTubers like disappeared from my YouTube feed every day, and suddenly I'm seeing all these Panasonic guys, which I guess is kind of cool, but it's just like changing everything. Hmm, it's tough. But I'm not afraid, you know, like I'm kind of up for something new, you know. I'm up for the flexibility also of having a full frame with my APS-C, man. I'm not getting rid of my A6400. So is the FX30 that different if I'm going to have all these capabilities in the S5? I, you know, it's still down sample from 6K. I mean, the, the image quality in the A6400 is ridiculous. It's incredible. Yeah, I'm going to go with the S5. I'm going to take that leap of faith. I'm going to get into something new. I'm going to get on a whole new learning curve. I'm gonna grow, expand. I feel like there's so much stuff in that camera that I can grow with. That's gonna make me a better artist. It's gonna make me have these tools to, to better tell my story. It's gonna have more, more at my fingertips to be able to express myself in exactly the way that I want to. I'm gonna go with the Panasonic. I think that's the best move for me right now. So, S5, So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go pull the trigger, spend that money. It's coming with the F1.8 50 millimeter lens. It's coming with all this other stuff. I saw that I could get a 20 to 60 kit lens on MPB for 265 bucks, like new. That kit lens is supposed to be really good. And you know, F3.5 on that full frame is like the equivalent of the Tamron 17 to 70 that I was using at F2.8, and everybody thought that was so amazing. And actually, F3.5 on a full frame is probably faster than F2.8 on an APS-C. It's probably closer to like F2.0, 2.2, something like that. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm gonna go with the Panasonic. That's the better move. I can grow with that. I got have, gonna have time code if I need that, you know. I'm gonna have a level meter. <laughs> I didn't have that before. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. The manual focus assist is like miles beyond what I've been using, you know, in video. I mean, you know, the manual focus assist in for photography in the Sony that I have is really good, but not in the video. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. 10 bit, 10 bit. How could I forget that? I'm gonna have 10 bit 422. And I got a monster computer that can handle any files. So I'm gonna have 4K, 4K24, 4K30, 4K60, 10-bit 422. Well, 420 and 60, I think. I think, I'm not sure about that. 120, 240, in 1080. Come on, man, the Panasonic is like a no-brainer. I'm dead, you know what? I'm going for the Panasonic. Yeah. Stop driving yourself crazy. Stop watching videos every day. But once you pull the trigger, stop. Don't look back. Commit to it. Learn it. Make it just a part of your soul. You know, like embrace this new gear 
and forget about the tech and get back to the story.